Wearing the wrong type of shoes is the number one cause of plantar fasciitis. In fact, if you don't address your footwear, you will never resolve this condition. You might be thinking, I don't wear my high heels anymore, or I gave up those fancy dress shoes or, and my Converse. But that's not the type of footwear I'm referring to. I'm talking about the shoes that you might think are good for your feet, but are actually causing your plantar fasciitis. In this video, I will explain exactly what healthy footwear looks like and what shoe brands could be helping or hindering your problem. I'm Dr. Angela and I'm the plantar fasciitis doc and I'm all about helping you resolve plantar fasciitis at home. Now, let's get to it. Many people, when they first begin to have that excruciating morning pain, when you first take that step in the morning, they'll do a quick Google search and read a few articles. You'll find hundreds of resources and suggestions for the best shoes for plantar fasciitis. The most common suggestions are brands like Hoka's, New Balance, Brooks, Birkenstocks, UFOs. However, all of those brands have damaging features that could be keeping you from resolving your foot pain. Do these look familiar? Do you have a pair of these in your closet? If you're relying on these types of shoes to fix your problem, you will be very disappointed. Towards the end of the video, I'll actually show you more examples of the best brands, so stick with me to the end. I want to start with listing the most damaging features in your shoes that could be causing your feet to become weak and painful so that you'll know what to look for in a shoe. The number one most damaging feature is wearing narrow or tapered toe box shoes. Again, I'm not referring to women's high heels. This applies to men's shoes, casual shoes, and even running shoes. When we cram our feet and toes into footwear with narrow toe boxes, our feet cannot function normally and over time begin to weaken and atrophy. Our toes begin to even deform and shift inward. Many of you may have noticed that your big toe has started to angle inward. This causes so many problems and sadly, most all footwear has this damaging feature and creates so much stress on your feet. The intrinsic muscles of your feet, which I like to call your foot core, will basically shut down and your foot will lose its ability to absorb shock. Can you see how this would be a problem? To function normally, your foot should be able to spread and splay and be widest at the forefoot. When this action is interrupted, our feet get weak and this leads to plantar fasciitis. We want a shoe that is widest at the toe. Want to know how to test and see if your shoes are wide enough? Take an insole out of one of your shoes, your favorite shoes that you wear all the time, set it on the ground and stand on it. If any part of your feet or toes extends over that insert, then these shoes are contributing to your plantar fasciitis. The second damaging feature is an elevated heel in your footwear. And again, not just women's high heels. In it, unfortunately, it is present in all footwear, even running shoes. You would think that if shoe designers added this feature, that there would be some solid evidence to support the presence, but there is none. Elevating the heel causes excessive stress on your forefoot because the foot is placed in such a downward angle. It also causes a chronic shortening of your heel cord, which is the Achilles tendon in the calf muscle. So it also contributes to Achilles issues. Zero drop is the term used to describe a completely flat shoe from heel to toe. When a shoe has zero drop, it distributes your body weight evenly across the foot and encourages natural arch support. The third most damaging feature is thick, cushiony shoes. Now, you may have noticed that the newest trend is to get these running shoes that have this heavy cushioning, brands like Hoka's or Ufo's. They may seem to be a good option because they look so comfortable. However, the thicker the cushion is below the foot, the less your foot can move properly and it actually hinders your normal shock absorption, which can lead to more injuries. The amount of cushioning is referred to stack height. 
That's the distance between here and here. Now, I'm not opposed to some cushioning, cushioning, but the excessive stack height is unnecessary. Another damaging feature is built-in arch supports and anti-pronation technology. Now, I'm sure you've seen these shoes like Birkenstocks and Chacos and running shoes with added arch support. These supports prevent your normal pronation, but pronation is not a bad thing. It's a necessary, normal action. This feature doesn't allow your feet to work on its own and only further weakens your feet. The less technology that a shoe has, the better it is for your foot. The more your shoe externally supports your feet, the less internal strength your feet develop. The feet actually become dependent on supportive shoes and orthotics. Does that make sense? Now, as I mentioned earlier, I wanna show you some examples of healthy footwear that meet the criteria for functional footwear. The brands I recommend are Ultra Shoes, Zero Shoes, Vivo Barefoot, and Flux Footwear. And I will link these in the description. And I'll start with a pair of Ultras. You see how these are widest at the toe? They have zero drop, so no elevation of the heel, and then no heavy cushioning, so very little stack height. I like to play pickleball in these shoes. Another pair of Ultras is called the Rivera. These have a little bit more cushioning, but are also widest at the toe and uh, a flat shoe. Another type is Vivo Barefoot. Uh, this is more of a minimalist shoe, and aren't they cute? <laughs> also a shoe that I wear often casually. So I hope you're getting the idea of what makes a healthy shoe. And you may be surprised at just how most conventional footwear has the damaging features that I was referring to. It's just baffling to me why most shoe manufacturers do not consider what truly makes a healthy shoe. I hope this has been enlightening for you and given you some good education on the best shoes to support your feet and your plantar fasciitis. Be sure that you download my free guide to resolve plantar fasciitis at home where I show you the exact steps to resolve your foot condition. Also, be sure that you watch my next video on more strategies to resolve your PF.